I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. For those who are coming for the first time, it's going to be a wonderful experience for you. Unforgettable experience. And for those who have been coming before, it's going to be a time of renewal for everyone. Give me a good, good amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Bible study. We came to listen to you tonight for you to reveal your mind, your heart to us. And we're asking, oh Lord, that nobody will miss the revelation you are giving tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. We we'll pray that the word will profit everyone, yeah. benefit everyone. Yeah. And we we'll pray it will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Yeah. Help us to be wise. Yeah. Wise about our salvation. Yeah. Wise about our destiny. Yeah. Wise about our relationship with you. Help us, Lord, to take your word serious in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Use this time to draw us near unto yourself. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're looking at John chapter 17 tonight. We are now going over some verses that are very, very essential. We shouldn't overlook. Actually, the chapter highlights an important subject a great revelation which must not be overlooked by anyone man is so occupied with things on earth earthly things that will forget about heaven and heavenly treasures but we need to understand that heaven is so important heaven is so precious heaven is so real and this passage talks about heaven and we don't want to miss that even though we've gone through what it teaches on the supplication of christ the prayer of christ the intercession of christ the sanctification of the believer and the real experience the evidence of that experience but now we're looking at these selected verses tonight i'm reading from verse one john chapter 17 verse one these will speak jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee come to verse 5 and now O father glorify thou me with thine own self or the glory which i had with thee before the world was you see it's going beyond now behind or before the time the world was created look at verse 8 in verse 8 for i have given unto them the words which thou hast givest me and they have received them and they have known that surely i came from thee he came from somewhere he came from heaven and then it says they have believed that thou did saint me look at verse 11 and now I am no more in the world. He's still alive and he's still saying, I'll not be in the world uh, for some time now. And he says, But these are in the world, and I come to thee. That's heaven right there. I come to thee. He was going to the Father in heaven. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. Look at verse 13. And now come I to thee. We shouldn't miss this. That he's talking about heaven. He's been on earth, and he says, Now my time on earth is over. I says, Now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, Father, I will. I desire that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. You see that? He's going to heaven and he's saying, Father, I want my disciples, I want my followers, I want the people you have given to me to be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. There's glory in heaven and there's wonder in heaven, there's splendor 
up in heaven and he says they will behold my glory which thou was given me for thou loved me before the foundation of the world tonight we're looking at the message Christ's revelation of return to the father in heaven he reveals to disciples and it's revealing to you and revealing to me that he's returning to the father in heaven christ's revelation of return to the father in heaven when we talk about god god is eternal and his dwelling place is heaven when we talk about the lord jesus christ christ is eternal and he lived in heaven with God before he came to this world to save us. We're talking about heaven. The Holy Spirit is eternal. His eternal abode is heaven. From heaven, he ministers to us here on earth. You're thinking about the angels and the angels since their creation. They have been abiding in God's presence in heaven. There are believers and saints of God who have left this world by death or by rapture in the case of enoch in the case of elijah these things of god after death or after being taken away from this world they went to labor with a redeemer forever in heaven heaven is the dwelling place of the almighty god we need to understand that look at first kings chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 30 first kings chapter 8 verse 30 and register this in your mind underline this in your bible and let this be in your memory indelible that heaven is the dwelling place of the almighty god the dwelling place of christ the dwelling place of the holy ghost the dwelling place of the angels and the dwelling place of the saints on high first kings chapter 8 i'm reading from the statue and hacking out to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel when they shall pray toward this place and hear thou look at this hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and when thou hearest forgive and so the word of God affirms that heaven is the dwelling place of the almighty God hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place we're looking at some two and i'm reading from verse four some two we're looking at verse four it says he that sitteth in the heavens shall love the lord shall have them in derision that emphasizes that god dwells in heaven he inhabits heaven he seated in heaven his throne is in heaven and then in psalm 73 reading from verse 25 psalm 73 Three, reading from verse 25 it says whom have i in heaven but thee god is in heaven the almighty is in heaven the most high is in heaven whom have i in but thee and there is none upon earth that i desire beside thee we're looking at psalm 123 verse 1 psalm 123 and we're reading from verse 1 still emphasizing for us and still revealing to us that heaven is the place of abode heaven is the dwelling place of the almighty god psalm 1 2 3 verse 1 it says unto thee lift i up mine eyes O thou that dwellest in the heavens you live in heaven it tells us in ecclesiastes chapter 5 ecclesiastes chapter 5 reading from verse 2 ecclesiastes chapter 5 reading from verse 2 it says be not rash for thy mouth and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before god look at this for god is where in heaven god is in heaven let there be no doubt in your heart we we'll say our father which art in heaven is our god and you live on earth but he lives in heaven heaven is the dwelling place of the almighty god for god is in heaven and thou upon earth therefore let thy words be few it tells us in jeremiah chapter 23 jeremiah chapter 23 here we're reading from verse 24 
home and the word of god makes it clear there should be no shadow of doubt in any heart there is heaven and that is the place jesus christ said he was going jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 24 can any hide himself in secret places that i shall not see says the lord do not i feel heaven and earth you see how he brings heaven and earth together if earth is real then heaven is real if earth is a place where people live then heaven is a place where god and the angels and the saints where they live it says do not i feel heaven and earth says the lord and then we come to the new testament now we'll be reading the old testament giving us assurance and giving us revelation there is a place called heaven and when a saint of god dies on earth here he goes to that place that is called heaven matthew chapter 6 we're reading from verse 9 matthew chapter 6 verse 9 after this manner therefore pray ye a father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name jesus gave the assurance that god the father god our heavenly father lives in heaven a father which art in heaven we're coming to acts of the apostles chapter 7 acts of the apostles chapter 7 i read from verse 49 acts chapter 7 reading from verse 49 look at what it says heaven is my throne and the earth have is my footstool what house will ye build me says the lord god says heaven is my throne is my dwelling place is where i have my majesty my honor my glory my splendor and that is where i have my throne before stephen died before stephen was stoned while they were discussing with him look at verse 55 of that acts chapter 7 verse 55 but he being full of the holy ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and he saw the glory of god he saw the glory of god i pray you'll see the glory of god and jesus standing on the right hand of god he saw god he saw jesus the savior jesus the redeemer jesus sacrifice he saw jesus on the right hand of god and then he says and he said behold i see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of god welcome to second corinthians chapter five second corinthians chapter five i'm reading from verse one there should be no doubt in your heart there's a place called heaven and it is a dwelling place of god there's a place called heaven and that is where jesus said he was going there's a place called heaven that's the place from where he said i will send the holy ghost the comforter unto you there's a place called heaven that's why abraham isaac and jacob where david and the patriarchs of old where the prophets of all where they have gone there's a place called heaven that's a place is going to prepare for us as well in second corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 1 it says for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved we have a building of god and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens eternal in the heavens eternal in the heavens talking about heaven it's not like earth which will be folded up someday and which will be burnt up someday which will be taken out of place someday but this is eternal eternal in the heavens in verse 2 for in this we grown earnestly desiring to be closed upon with our house which is from where from heaven and then you come to verse 6 it says therefore we're always confident knowing that once we're at home in the body when we're still alive like you are sitting there or standing there tonight you're at home your spirit your soul is at home in the body we're absent 
from the Lord. That is, he is in heaven, we are on earth, and we are absent from the Lord. Look at this in verse 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. The moment a child of God dies, the moment a saint dies, a righteous man, the moment somebody is born again when he dies and his spirit leaves the body, absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. We come to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and I read from verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory or to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years, beyond 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth such and one caught up to the third heaven. You see that Paul the Apostle here is saying, I had the revelation. I don't know whether my body and soul and spirit, everything transported to the third heaven, or whether my body was here on earth, and then my spirit, my soul just went up there. But I know that I was caught up to the third heaven in verse 3. And I knew such a man is talking, this is a just, uh, is reporting something about himself, but he's uh, using this kind of language, talking in the third person. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot until God knoweth how he was caught up into paradise. That's another name for heaven. He was caught up into paradise and he heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. That is like he didn't have the language to be able to tell the people all the beauties and all the glories of heaven. The place is so beautiful you'll discover when you get over there. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 in Philippians chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 20 Philippians chapter 3 reading from verse 20 it says for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ our mind is in heaven alive in heaven a perspective in heaven a passion in a manner of life citizenship is in heaven for our conversation our citizenship is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change a vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself he will do it in Jesus name now we come to Hebrews chapter 8 Hebrews chapter 8 look at verse 1 here Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 now of the things which we have spoken in this is the sum this is the summary it says of the things we're revealing of the things we're learning of the things we're hearing this is the sum the summary we have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty where in the heavens, in the heavens, from the Old Testament and the New Testament, and from the Gospels, from the epistles everywhere, is telling us there is heaven. Jesus spoke about heaven. The angels spoke about heaven. The apostles and the prophets spoke about heaven. Heaven is a real place. Look at chapter 12 of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, and I'm reading here from verse 22. Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 22. It says in verse 22, But she are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, is saying that as we come, we're not coming to Mount Sinai, we're coming to Zion, and it says there is a heavenly Jerusalem to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are reaching where? 
in heaven and so there's no doubt there's heaven and jesus was talking to his own disciples and he's saying i'm going away and should have asked me where i'm going i came from the father i'm going back to the father i came from heaven and i'm going back to heaven he says reaching in heaven and to god the judge of all and to the spirits of men made perfect god is in heaven jesus is in heaven the holy spirit is in heaven in the first john chapter 5 first john chapter 5 reading from verse 7 first john chapter 5 reading from verse 7 for there are three that bear record where are they bearing record in heaven there are three that bear record in heaven the father in heaven the word that's jesus in heaven and the holy ghost in heaven and these three are one and so that's what jesus is revealing about his departure to heaven and is revealing about our own participation about our own being with him in heaven we're coming back to john chapter 17 john chapter 17 jesus christ talking about heaven and jesus christ making a revelation about heaven and jesus christ helping his own disciples to understand if there's any place they should think about out, it is heaven john chapter 17 verse 1 this was big jesus when he lifted up his eyes to heaven he was so eager he was going there he was getting ready he was going there and he remembered he had been there from all the eternity before he came to this world and now he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said father the hour is come you know many times uh, jesus will say my hour has not come i still have some things to do my hour has not come i see i have some lives to touch my hour has not come i see i have some work and some things i need to finish but now he said my hour the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee and then he began to tell those disciples that were going away he came from somewhere and he's going back to that place he came from verse 11 and now i am no more in the world but these are in the world and i come come to thee i come to thee going to heaven going to heaven i come to thee look at verse 13 and now come i to thee going to heaven but not just that was going to heaven look at uh, verse 24 now in verse 24 father i will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where i am you will not be in this world forever Amen. or do you want to be in this world forever no we want to go to heaven and jesus said uh, where he's going he's going to heaven i will see that the dwelling place of god and he says i want my disciples so that where i am there they will be also to behold my glory the teaching tonight centers on christ's revelation of return to the father in heaven there are three things we're looking at number one the departure of the only begotten son to heaven the departure of the only begotten son to heaven point number two the destiny of obedient sons in heaven the destiny of obedient sons in heaven number three the dedication of overcoming saints for heaven the dedication the devotion the commitment the pursuit the passion that we know there is heaven and it is for the saints of god and it is for those who overcome the dedication then the commitment of overcoming saints for heaven number one the departure of the only begotten son to heaven you remember that jesus christ is referred to as the only begotten son of god so when we talk about the departure of the only begotten son we're talking about the lord jesus christ come to john chapter one john chapter one reading from verse 18 john chapter one i'm reading from verse 18 no man has seen god 
God at any time. The only begotten Son, that's Jesus, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Jesus is referred to as the only begotten Son. Look at John chapter 3. John chapter 3, reading from verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Again, that's Jesus. That's the title that he had. The father called him his beloved son, his only begotten son. He says uh, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I pray you believe and you will not perish and you have everlasting life in jesus name we're looking at uh, we're looking at some two we're looking at some two here and in verse two it tells us still talking about jesus christ it says in verse six and uh, look at this uh, chapter two of the psalms in verse six yet have i set my king upon my holy hill of zion i will declare the decree the lord hath said unto me thou art my son this day have I begotten thee. And so when we're talking about the only begotten son, we're talking about Jesus Christ. And this uh, first section of the study talks about the departure that was leaving this world. Come back now to John chapter 17. John chapter 17, the departure of the only begotten son to heaven. In John chapter 17 verse 1, this word speak Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. Come to verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world began. Before the creation of the world, Christ had been in existence and before anything was created at all Christ was there because he's eternal and he says now glorify me with the glory which I had with you before the beginning of the world he tells us in verse 11 and now I am no more in the world but these are in the world and I come to thee I come to thee he knew the time had come he knew the time had arrived when he Christ the only begotten son will go back to the father and what a blessed reunion that will be that Jesus had left heaven, he had come to this world so that he will give his life for redemption, for salvation. But now that was going to finish that work, he says, I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that day may be one as we are one. Verse 13, and now come I to thee come I to thee. He knew where he was going and was going to the Father. This wasn't the first time he was saying that he was departing from this world. Come to John chapter 13. John chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 1 it says now before the feast of the Passover when Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart from this world unto the father you see that he knew that his hour had come and it's wonderful when you can tell the hour has come to live here and then to go to the next place he knew that his hour had come that he would depart out of of this world and then go on to the father having loved his own which were in the world he loved them unto the end look at verse 3 and Jesus knowing that the father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from the father from God and went to God he came from God and was going back unto God when he came to this world he came from heaven he came from the father and now that the time has come he's finished everything he was doing here he was going back to God and was going to the father come to chapter 16 
John chapter 16, we're looking at verse 7. There was so much assurance, and it was so definite that Jesus Christ, he came here to do something. And what he came to do, he had finished and finalized. And because of that, now that that work had been done, he was now going back unto the Father. In John chapter 16, verse 7, John 16, verse 7, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expected for you that I go away. He was going away, going from the earth and now we know where he was going. Where was he going? He was going to heaven. For if I go not away the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, the departure of the only begotten son, if I depart, I will send him unto you. You understand the implication of that? He is in heaven as a father is in heaven. I am going to the father in heaven. When I get to heaven, I'll send the Holy Spirit from heaven and send him unto you. When did that happen? When did he get to heaven? You know that after this was betrayed. After this was crucified. And then he died for our sins. And after that death was buried. And on the third day, what happened? He rose from the dead. Look at it now. John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Going to heaven. The time he went to heaven. And how he went to heaven. To start with, he died for our sins. In John chapter 20 verse 1. The first day of the week. Come at Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark into the sepulchre and seeth the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. That means Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. And we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came forth to the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in saw the leaning clothes uh, lying. Yet went he not in. Then come and Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and seeth the little close line and the napkin that was about his edge not lying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself then went in also the other disciple which came first to the sepulchre and he saw and believed that Christ was not there the tomb was empty only the linen clothes were there because Jesus Christ had risen from the dead for as yet they knew not the scripture that she must rise again from the dead then the disciples went away again on unto their own home but Mary stood without a disciple weeping and as she went, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. She must see Jesus Christ. You must see Jesus Christ. The others have led without seeing him, but she was passionate about this. Look at verse 12. And see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her woman, why we best thou she said unto them because they have taken away my lord and i know not where they have laid him and when he had thus said she turned herself back and saw jesus standing and knew not that it was jesus jesus says unto her woman why weepest thou whom seekest thou? She is supposing him to be the gardener, says unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She taught herself, and she said unto him, Rabboni, the Lord will mention your name. Yeah which is to say master but look at this this is what we're looking for look at this verse 17 jesus says unto her 
touch me not for I am not yet ascended to my father but go tell my brethren and say unto them I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God after he rose from the dead that's when he went to heaven and he went to be in heaven with the father come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 I'm reading here from verse 9 Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 9 and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight and while they looked steadfastly toward where where did he go heaven as they went up behold two men two angels actually stood by them in white apparel which also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up into where into heaven this same jesus which is taken from you into where into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into where into heaven the angel said he went to heaven jesus said he was going to heaven thank god he went to heaven and he's gone to prepare a place for you and when he has gone and when he has finished preparing the place for you he will come again and he will come for you okay he will come for me come for you in Jesus name the Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten son of God came from heaven and was going back to heaven the father had sent him to the earth for a purpose what for, for what purpose did the father sent the Lord Jesus Christ number one to reveal the truth that saves that's what he came to do and it's finished that number two it was to seek and to save the lost world the world was lost lost in sin lost in darkness lost in degradation lost in their guilt and lost in condemnation and jesus came to seek and to save the lost world number three to sacrifice and pay the price for our redemption that's what he came to do yes he healed the sick he opened the eyes of the blind he raised the dead but the climax of what he came to do he came to sacrifice and pay the price for redemption number four he came to bring many sons to glory he wanted to take us away from the fall and take us away from our sin and bring us to glory number five it was to convey the love of god to sinful humanity to convey the love of god because people did not know that god so loved the world that he would give his only begotten son and jesus came to convey the love of god to sinful humanity number six to grant us grace mercy and salvation as we repent as we turn to the Lord he came to say God has forgiven us and then he gave that forgiveness on the on behalf of his father number seven to raise ambassadors and representatives who will continue like him to the end of the world because if you only save the people at that time and then the rest of us were not hearing the gospel what will be our Lord and what will be our destiny therefore he came to raise up ambassadors and representatives uh, that will continue the work that he had begun and now that he had done that major part and the only thing that remained now was for him to die on the cross he was now ready to go come back to John chapter 17 John chapter 17 it says in verse 4 John chapter 17 verse 4 I have glorified thee on the earth I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do and now that I've finished all that that I told you now that's why I said haven't finished that he was ready to go back to the father ready to go back to heaven and to heaven he went and when he went to heaven he sat on the right hand of majesty on high don't miss that look at mark chapter 16 
Mark chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 19. Mark chapter 16, verse 19. He went to heaven, not just anyway, heaven to the right hand side of the Father. Mark chapter 16, verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into where? heaven and sat on the right hand of god that's his place that's his place you'll have your place when you go there yeah. it says in luke chapter 24 luke chapter 24 where christ went he went to heaven luke chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 50 and he led them out as far as to bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them look at this and it came to pass while he blessed them he was parted from them and carried where up into heaven carried up into heaven and that is where he is now hebrews chapter one hebrews chapter one thank god my jesus is in heaven my savior is in heaven my redeemer is in heaven he said that's where i was going and i was carried into heaven look at hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of majesty on high he's in heaven chapter 4 hebrews chapter 4 we're looking at verse 14 hebrews chapter 4 reading from verse 14 seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens we have a great high priest and is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold fast our profession because we are going there too Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are figures of the true, but into heaven itself. Is entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. First Peter chapter 3 verse 22 first peter chapter 3 verse 22 first peter which chapter are you looking for what verse do you want to read chapter 3 verse 22 who is gone into tell me heaven thank god is in heaven you cannot miss it he said he was going to heaven where did he go he got to heaven and he will give you the grace to get there too who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. We come to point number two now. And we're coming to John chapter 17. John chapter 17 is so uplifting and it's so wonderful to know and to remember that Jesus has gone into heaven. But then he said something about this heaven. He about the place was going to point number two the destiny of obedient sons in heaven the destiny our destiny is in heaven yeah. your destiny is in heaven yeah. I can almost picture you entering those pearly gates I can picture you sitting down by the side of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful day that will be that where he is, there you will be also. That's why you are saved. That's why you are born again. And that's why you are sanctified. That's why you are studying the Bible. Who wants to just study the Bible and then know about heaven? And then the time comes and then we are not there. Thank God you will be there. And thank God I will be there too. Your joy will not be full if you are there, if I'm not there. And my joy will not be full if I'm there and you are not there. You'll be there, I'll be there. Yeah. Look at John, look at John. John chapter 17, we're looking at verse 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Where is he now? Yeah. 
in heaven it says that those who have given to me and those who have turned away from their sin and they have come to know the lord as their personal savior that they will be with me where i am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world and that's not the first time you'll say something like that look at this chapter 12 john chapter 12 we're reading from verse 23 john John chapter 12 reading from verse 23 it says and Jesus answered them saying the hour is come that the son of man shall be glorified verily verily I say unto you except a kind of wheat fall into the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit looks like your life is going to be fruitful your ministry will be fruitful and what you do for the lord will be fruitful in jesus name look at verse 25 he that loveth his life shall lose it that he is the one that is over protecting his life i don't want to go there it's raining i don't want to go out the sun is too much i don't want to go there it's dark i don't want to evangelize i don't want to do anything he's over protecting himself and he says he that loveth his life over protecting himself shall lose it and he that hateth his life the one that says i'm going to throw out my life for the salvation of humanity in this world shall keep it unto life eternal verse 26 look at don't miss this one if any man serve me who is that you see here tonight if any man any woman serve me let him follow me look at this and where i am there shall also my servant be see that it's in heaven and it says you will be in heaven it says there shall my servant be if any man serve me him will my father honor we're coming to chapter 14 john chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 1 john chapter 14 from verse 1 let not your heart be troubled ye believe in god do you believe in god believe also in me believe on the lord jesus christ is your savior is your sanctifier he is your all in all is the one that supplies all your need spiritual and physically materially in my father's house are many mansions in my father's house are many mansions and it will go around for all the people who are saved it will go around and for all the people who are obedient to the lord it will go around in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for put your name there i go to prepare a place for yeah. that's got to be a place for you yeah. i'm sure you are eager to go there yeah. and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again i will come again look at this and receive you unto myself that where i am yeah. where i am there ye may be also you know there are some people they're religious people traditionally religious people and they go about houses knocking at doors knocking at doors and they say buy this one buy this literature and then when you say what's there they say it will show you how you are going to live on this earth forever and ever as i take that one away who wants to live on the dusty earth forever and ever where do you want to live forever somebody comes to you but selling something and selling something and say read this one this this one it will show you that you know after a megadon and this and that then you are going to stay here look at all the houses around which one do you like to stay forever i said which one do you want to stay forever but it's a place in heaven that christ has gone to prepare he's going to prepare for for me and he says where i am there you will be also nothing will take you away from that place but you know it is for obedient sons obedient sons look at verse 15 if he loved me keep my commandments look at verse 24 in verse 24 it says he that loveth me not keepeth not my sins that is the people who are not keeping the sins of christ and they are not born again they are not living obedient righteous lives they're not going there but thank god you are going there he that loveth me not keepeth not my sins and 
the word which ye hear is not mine but the father which sent me look at verse 28 ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. He's going to prepare a place for us. First John, First John chapter 3. In First John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. First John chapter 3, we're reading from verse 1. It says, Beloved, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Personal, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon you that we shall be called the sons of God therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not beloved now are we the sons of God when are you sons of God when are you daughters of God now this time by salvation you turn away from sin you believe on the lord jesus christ he forgives you he cleanses you he sets you free and the spirit of god bears witness in your heart you are a child of god some people say we cannot tell that we are children of god until we die and go to the great beyond that's too late that's too late the time to have assurance is now he forgives our sins he cleanses us from all sin he gives us his grace he makes us to live righteous lives and he says beloved now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know i know i said i know there's assurance in salvation there's assurance in the grace of god when your sins are forgiven when he gives you the grace of god there's assurances that we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him i think uh, these are verses you must make personal when he shall appear i shall be like him when he shall appear say that again for we shall see him as he is anytime you have trial anytime you have temptation anytime you have some confusion anytime you have some uphill task and it appears that things are tough and things are hard and the devil wants to say look at you now look at your challenge now you say i know things are going to change because when he shall appear think about that i'm going to be like him sister did you hear that you're going to be like him my brother don't drop your head don't don't be so sorrowful because it is not the way you are now that you'll be at that time when it shall appear you will be like him the angels will see you and they will rejoice but look at verse 3 look at verse 3 and every man that has this hope in him what does he do purify himself even as as David was pure even as tell me out aloud but you know there are people they excuse sin they excuse shortcoming they excuse you know as some kind of bad behavior they say after all david did this forget about that after all abraham told uh, this forget about that after all look at uh, aaron look at what he did but thank god you are not measured by the purity by the lifestyle by the holiness of aaron or abraham or david who are you measured with Jesus, every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, tell me, even as he is pure. We're coming to, uh, for, we're coming to uh, this uh, passage now that talks about what we have to be as obedient children. First Peter, First Peter chapter 1, in First Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 2. First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit spirit unto obedience that's it that's what he calls us to that's what he wants us to be unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of jesus christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied 
blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, look at this, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again, born again, unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away. Tell me the rest of that verse. Reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God. He will keep you. Amen. He will keep you faithful. Amen. Keep you strong. Amen. You will not fall. Amen. No temptation will come to you that will make you fall. Amen. Every temptation that comes will give you the grace you will overcome. Amen. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time and look at uh, verse 14 look at the kind of people he's talking to it says in verse 14 uh, as what kind of children yes. what kind of child are you yes. as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance but as he which has called you is holy as he which has called you is holy as he himself who has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written tell me be ye holy for I am holy you see the father and the son in heaven desire all true children of God that will be in heaven that will be in heaven forever and the true sons of God and the true daughters of God are born again believers and these born again believers number one they abide in the truth they're not people that play with lies and they play with deception and they play with disobedience and play with transformation transgression number one they abide in the truth number two they live in the truth they live in the truth truth surrounds them and truth indwells them number three they obey the truth these are the sons of God who are expecting that when Christ comes he'll take them to heaven and they will live in heaven forever with the Lord one abiding in the truth truth living in the truth three obeying the truth the truth that concerns your personal life and the truth that concerns your marriage and the truth that concerns the doctrine of the bible and the truth that concerns the way you walk and the truth that concerns righteousness obedience to the lord they are obeying the truth number four they delight in the truth they rejoice in the truth they appreciate the truth they embrace the truth you see somebody who is says I'm a child of God but he doesn't like the truth of the Bible doesn't delight in the truth of the Bible that salvation is doubtful when you are saved when you're a real child of God you delight in the truth and they are spreading the truth you don't just hold the truth hold the truth and keep the truth yourself you spread that truth and you are defending the truth that's a real child of God a person that has real conviction and is defending that truth and is holding holding that truth and is holding forth that truth as well I come to philippians uh, chapter 2 philippians chapter 2 i'm reading here from verse 2 philippians chapter 2 and we're looking at uh, verse 2 it says fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded having the same love being of one accord and of one mind let nothing be done through strife and vain glory these are obedient children of God but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves look not every man on his own things verse 4 but every man also on the things of others that he is a real child of God is not a self-centered child is not a person that is looking at only my advantage only what I like only what I want he wants the profit of others he wants the advantage of 
others he wants the joy of others in verse 5 let this might be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it robbery to be equal with God but he made himself of no reputation and he's saying that we are to follow the life of Christ he that has this hope in him purifies himself even as Christ is pure and how pure was Christ he, he sought for himself no reputation but he took upon him the form of his servant and he was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself you remember what we were to be if we're going to be obedient sons of God and we're going to get ready for heaven he purified himself even as he is pure as Christ is pure and as Christ humbled himself so we humbled ourselves ourselves and he became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that are the name of Jesus tell me out aloud Amen. every initial bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord that's your confession Amen. I said that's your confession Amen. Jesus is your Lord Amen. you'll not go back to idol worship Jesus is your Lord Amen. you'll not go back to the Pharisees Sadducees Jesus is your Lord Amen. you'll not go back to any kind of a personality on earth Jesus is your Lord Amen. to the glory of God the Father wherefore wherefore my beloved as she have always always tell me always tell me out aloud Amen. you see that's the word of God if we go into heaven and if we have the hope of getting to heaven we always obey in the area of marriage always obey not unequally yoked together with unbelievers always obey not fraudulent always obey and living a life that glorifies the Lord in holiness and righteousness all the days of your life always obey go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature always obey it says wherefore my beloved my beloved as she have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God which walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure do all things how do all things how without murmuring and disputing